Watching these wild birds and how they are adapted to function in nature, they are very resilient. They are really good at what they do. I think one of the fundamental things that attracted me to being a researcher is I like a puzzle, I like a question, I, I like a, a, something difficult to address and, and I want to work on that, hopefully develop answers to questions that will help our constituents. The National Wildlife Research Center Mississippi Field Station is part of Wildlife Services, which is part of the USDA, the Animal Plant Health Inspection Service. Our mission is centered around defining the economic impacts of uh, bird predation on aquaculture and then trying to do research and design methods for reducing the economic impact. Uh, we work on fish eating birds and included in that are great egrets. Uh, wood storks, double-crested cormorants, and the American white pelican. The field station was established around 1988 specifically to deal with fish-eating bird issues, particularly as they pertain to catfish aquaculture. Catfish aquaculture is a big industry in Mississippi and in the southeast in general. Um, it's the biggest fin fish aquaculture industry in the U.S. We know from our research that fish-eating birds cause millions of dollars of damage to uh, catfish producers or catfish farmers. <sighs> they cause a lot of problems for the farmers. Uh, number one has been predation. The birds actually going in and eating uh, fish out of ponds. The other areas that we're concerned with are uh, disease and disease transfer. We've proven through research that these fish-eating birds can transmit disease from one pond to another. Many of the fish-eating birds that impact catfish aquaculture are migratory and so they also cause problems up on their breeding grounds to sport fisheries, um, to co-nesting species, and to the habitats on the islands in the Great Lakes. Our facility is located on about a 13-acre site co-located with on Mississippi State University's campus in Starkville, Mississippi. One of the ideal things about our facility is it gives us the chance to do research on fish eating birds in a captive setting so that we can do controlled studies instead of just observational studies. We have a aviary over some 10th acre ponds which allows us to bring birds in and conduct research in controlled situations and see what kind of damage they're doing. We also have uh, lab facilities um, in which we can do necropsies and, and that sort of work, diet analyses. We also have access to the Mississippi Agriculture and Forestry Experiment Station's research ponds. Right now we're conducting a research study to evaluate the effects of a bacteria called Edwarsiella piscicida. It's novel and it's causing a lot of new infections in the catfish industry, specifically the hybrid catfish industry in the Mississippi Delta. So what we're aiming to do on this study is to look at how does it spread? What role do fish eating birds play in causing the spread of this disease from pond to pond? How exactly does the epidemiology work in the spread of this disease? My research involves evaluating management programs. There's a method called split pond aquaculture, which concentrates the fish into a smaller area of the ponds um, and it, it's a very efficient way of producing large numbers of fish in a small area it may provide some other benefits too such as making it easier to keep fishing eating birds off their ponds and that's one of the things we're investigating. Uh, I'm also involved in research um, looking at cormorant roost sites. Wildlife Services roost dispersal program. It has been one of the most uh, effective means of reducing damage to the aquaculture industry over the last 20 years or so. Initially this program was designed to move birds from the interior of the Mississippi Delta over to the Mississippi River. The reason for that is once we get them on the river they tend to eat in more natural water bodies, eat more shad, things like that, that and cause less damage to aquaculture. However, now because the industry has shifted its area, it's not really feasible to try and move all those birds to the river. So we have to identify places where we can move them to in order to minimize damage to the producers. Yeah, I work with the Wildlife, Fisheries, and Aquaculture Department personnel here at Mississippi State University. I have a graduate student and we wanted to look at a small 
uh, relatively inexpensive uh, UAS to see unmanned aerial system uh, to see if the UAS could keep the fish eating birds off the catfish ponds. Uh, there's promise there, but if the birds were flying into the facility or close to the facility, we could scare them off with the drone. The uh, limiting factor right now is short battery life. Hopefully the battery life cycle will improve over time and uh, enable to keep the, uh, the drone up in the air longer periods of time. Although we're based in Mississippi, the field station actually has a, a national reach. Last year alone, we worked with 16 wildlife um, operations groups in 16 different states. We worked with uh, 10 universities, five federal organizations, uh, six non-government organizations, and additional five foreign entities. One of the things that we have to do and our field station takes uh, a lot of pride in doing is trying to get our research results to our stakeholders. Well, our research uh, can benefit or help people on all scales from local uh, fish farmers to uh, regional managers to uh, refuge managers, national wildlife refuge managers to state agencies and uh, even provincial governments in Canada and uh, their you know, counterparts in Mexico. Many of the times the challenges that we face, you can't do it alone and because of that there is a sense of camaraderie because we're all working on the same team to solve the problem. You kind of cheer each other on and nobody's going home until the job gets done so we're all in it together.